Hey everybody, welcome to the 13 days of Halloween with Makers Gonna Learn. My name's Alicia and today we're gonna be making a super fun fall door hanger. I'm gonna be taking you all through every step of the process between painting your sign, designing it in design space, and how to do the perfect stencil every single time. It's so easy. Stay tuned so you guys can learn exactly how to make perfect stencils on all of your wood signs. Let's go overhead so I can show you all everything you're going to need to complete this project. Here's everything you're going to need to complete this project. So we've got our stencil vinyl. This is the Starcraft mint colored stencil vinyl. Um, the tack on this is really, really good if you're doing wood signs. They do offer a yellow stencil vinyl. Um, that works really good, but this one is better for wood in my opinion. And then I also have the Caesar transfer tape. This is my favorite transfer tape. There's actually lots of favorites in this video. Um, I've got a paintbrush, a sanding block. You're going to want to do um, 180 or above to sand. We're just doing like a light sand. Even a 220 would work for this. Nothing super crazy. We're just kind of smoothing out our wood sign. And then I've got my colors. So we've got our background color, which is this linen folk art color. I'm obsessed. I use this color for so many things. And then I've got a toasted terracotta and a golden sunset. And I made sure to pick out matte paints. The Starcraft um, chalk paint works decently well, but any you're going to want to use any matte paint. So matte is going to work best for when we're doing our stencil technique. Um, you're just going to get the cleanest edges if you're using a matte paint. And then I've got a staple gun, a weeding tool, some floral wire and some wire cutters, some scissors. Obviously, we've got our wood blanks. And these, I want to say, were two for 10. So this is like a two piece. These are such a good size. This is an 18 inch round, um, but like not super thick. So there's actually two in this package. I haven't opened it up yet, um, but these were only $10 for two. That is like a good deal. You can't really find that anywhere else. And that may have just been a sale, um, but make sure and check at Michael's every so often because they do run specials on stuff like that. And then I've got some floral wires. All of these are just floral stems from Hobby Lobby. Got these cute little pumpkins I may add in. We're gonna kind of play around with our florals and get it to something that we like. And then I've already pre-cut some of this out, but I wanted to add that I cut most of this, actually I cut all of it on a 24 inch mat. So this is um, a 24 inch fabric grip mat. <laughs> Um, you don't need to use a fabric grip mat. You should probably use like a standard grip 24 inch mat, but this one, the stickiness is perfect for what I wanted. So it's been used, so it's sticky, but it's not like a brand new fabric grip mat, if that makes sense. Um, if you've ever used a fabric grip mat, you know that they're like super sticky. So standard grip would be perfect as long as it's 24 inches. Okay, so once you're in design space, what I like to do when I'm designing these wood rounds is go ahead and pull in a circle that is the size of our wood round. And today we're going to be doing an 18 inch, so super big. And Cricut actually has a new feature that you can use, and it's a guide. So it's not brand new. It's been out for a couple of months. Um, but if you've been in the design space world, that this is relatively new to you. Um, this is basically just a guide for you rather than a cut. So if I pull in a shape and I don't necessarily want it to cut, I can just have this here to kind of pull in whatever images I want. So that's pretty, pretty handy, especially when you're trying to design something. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull in the pattern that I'm wanting to use. So we're going to be using this fall leaf file. We had this exclusively made for the 13 days of Halloween. So we're super excited about it. And then I'm going to go ahead and type out what I want on my sign as well. So I like to kind of gather all of the elements that I want to put on the sign and then we can customize them from there. So I've got this, I've got this, and then I have my guide. So what we're going to do first 
is I'm going to go ahead and slice out some of this cheetah print. I'm wanting to do my welcome kind of going through the middle here, just like that. But what I want to do first is slice out some of these leaves onto the round. You can notice that they're two different colors. So this is like a multi-layered SVG file. I need them to all be like a solid image. So I'm going to weld everything together. We're making a stencil, so it's not going to matter the color of it in design space. So I welded the image together. I'm going to select the image as well as the guide, and then I'm going to slice it. And then you can see we've got this bottom part is totally just our leaf cheetah print. And then we can delete all of this. So we've got the bottom half of our circle and then we've still got our welcome. And I'm gonna go ahead and change this font to a pretty script. And we can go to the Makers Gonna Learn website to find any of our fonts. We have lots of new fonts that came out this month. Um, if you are new around here, we are a membership-based crafting community. So basically we put out content for our members every month, exclusive content. We've got brand new fonts and cut files every single month and there's a lot of them and they are so, so cute. You can already see how cute these fonts are. Um, but you can come up here to the top and you can pick, like if you want a script, if you want to do a monogram, just a basic font, but we want to do a really pretty script. We just want to make sure it's legible since we're doing um, a sign that you're going to be reading from probably the road or something like that. So let's just scroll down here and see which font that we prefer. The good thing about this website is that whenever you see a font that you want, you can actually click on that font and then type in the word so you can see what the word's going to look like before you actually apply it to whatever you're designing. So let me just show you. I really love this duplicity font, so I'm going to click on that. And then once you're in here, you can kind of test it out. So we can type in welcome and you can see if you like that. I feel like that's not going to be super legible from the road. So I'm not going to go with this one. But just so you know, you all are going to be able to get into our website and kind of play around with anything that you're designing. And you're going to be able to be really specific about the fonts that you want to use in your designs. Okay, so the first impression font I think is super cute. We're gonna go ahead and download that. It's gonna download it as a zip file and we're going to unlock it and we're going to unzip it, then open it up and install the font. So after it's downloaded, go back to Design Space and what you're gonna do is save your project. So I'm just gonna save this as Fall Door Hanger and I'm gonna save it into my projects. And then what I'm going to do is hit view and reload. This is going to allow our font to reload into design space. Otherwise, whenever we go to look for the font, it's not going to be in our font book. So we'll go to system and then we're going to search the font name, which is first impressions. There it is. So I'm going to zoom out. And obviously we're going to need to resize this. What I'm going to do here is add another circle that is the same size as the previous circle. So we've got an 18 inch circle. And I'm going to send this to the back. I'm going to change it to white. And then you can adjust the sizing of this as needed. Now, if you don't want it to fill up the whole entire thing, you can do it just small like this. Um, I like to fill it up as big as possible. So I'm going to stretch it all the way out. And I think I like that size pretty good. But I feel like it needs something behind it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like a band of color right over top of this cheetah. So I'm going to go back to my shapes panel and select the square. And I'm going to unlock the shape and then stretch it all the way across. And you can do this band as thick or as short as you want. I feel like that's pretty good right there. And then what I'm going to do is select this rectangle as well as the circle and I'm going to slice that rectangle into the circle. 
So you're not going to need any of that. You're just going to need that band. You can delete any of this extra stuff. We just need the band. If you want to go back in and add another circle just so you've still got that guideline, you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to change it back to white and send it to the back. This is just kind of my design process. Everyone's going to do it a little bit differently. You don't have to do it. Um, as long as you get there, you can do it whatever way that you want. I'm going to go ahead and change these to a burnt orange color just so I can get a good vision of kind of what I want. Okay, I love, love, love that color. And then we're going to do this one. Let's go ahead and bring this to the front. And then you can kind of play around the colors and see what you like best. We could do black. And then I still feel like it needs a little bit of something. Now we are going to be putting floral up here at the top. So we don't have to do a whole lot more. Um, but I feel like it'd be cute if we just had one of these little leaves kind of floating up here. So I'm going to duplicate this. And I'm going to slice out one of those leaves. So I'm going to actually contour it out. So I'm going to select contour and hide all contours. And I think I want to keep this little leaf. So you can see this leaf is the only one that's going to stay. And I'm going to kind of blow this up. And you can place it wherever you want. And I think maybe we'll incorporate that golden yellow color here. I think that's really pretty. I might actually just blow it up right here and then bring your font to the front. So it's going to look something like that. Now you can do this with or without the leaf. You don't have to do this part. I just thought it would be fun to add another little element in here. Okay, so before we go to cut it, I'm just going to hide our circle because we don't need to cut that out. Um, I am going to attach the words and the leaf, even though they're different colors, I want them to cut together. And then I want to cut the cheetah fall pattern as well as this rectangle together. So I'm going to attach those and then we can go ahead and make it. I'm going to select on mat and you can see it automatically loads it to a 24 inch mat. We're not going to need to mirror it because we're just doing a stencil. Um, same goes here and you can just go ahead and select continue. And I am doing this on a Maker 3. You can do this on any Cricut machine um, as long as it is able to cut the 12 inch um, width. So we're going to be using stencil vinyl. And you can see there's quite a bit of different options. I just use this simple stencil vinyl right here. And we're using a fine point blade. We can go ahead and send our vinyl through the machine. Um, it's not really going to matter, but just make sure you're aware of which item is cutting. I already went ahead and cut this cheetah print portion, so I'm going to go ahead and just cut this one. Okay, so before you apply any paint to your backer, we are going to go ahead and lightly sand everything and then we're going to wipe it off and we will apply our first, first coat of paint. I find whenever you sand, it looks best. If you're sanding in circular motions, it makes it so it's not so scratchy. And then I'm just going to take a paper towel and wipe off any dusty residue before we go in to paint. Okay, so my base color is going to be this linen folk art mat. I'm just going to go ahead and get my paintbrush, and then I've got a cup of water on hand. That way I can rinse in between colors. And I'm just going to apply a little bit of this to our round. And then go ahead and start covering the entire piece. 
and it's best to go in the same direction. So if you like to paint up and down, just commit to that and paint up and down for the entire thing. That way it looks smooth and consistent. I will say that matte paint dries a lot faster than like a gloss or a satin would, um, but it works really well for whenever you're using stencils because the lines are so clean. And if you find after your first coat that you need another layer of paint, you have to wait until your paint is completely dry before you add a second coat. Otherwise, whenever you go in with your second coat, if this is not dry, it may peel up the paint that's underneath it, um, and it's just gonna look like a hot mess. So make sure if you do need a second coat that you just let it dry entirely and then go in and paint it. Okay, now I'm gonna take the heat gun and dry this. Just making sure not to get super close to it. Um, but this just speeds up the process a little bit. Since this is matte, you're gonna be able to really see when the paint dries because it's not shiny anymore. If you put your paint on too thick and you use the heat gun, it will cause your paint to crack and it almost looks like that eggshell paint if you all have ever seen that. Um, now if that's the vibe that you're going for, it looks really cute and rustic, um, but we just want a really pretty solid coat of this color. So I don't want to get too close and I want to make sure that I'm applying my paint layers in thin even coats. So my first coat was very thin and then after it dries, if I need another coat, I can go back in. Uh, but try not to lay it on too thick, just because your stencil's not gonna stick well, it's gonna take forever to dry, and if you do dry it with a heat gun, it may crack. Okay, so there's still a little bit that needs to dry, but I'm gonna sit it to the side and go ahead and start weeding our stencil, because the cheetah print is pretty intricate. So I'm just gonna slide this over, and then we can go ahead and start weeding. So whenever you're doing a stencil, you're gonna be weeding out what you want painted. So I want to paint the welcome onto my sign. So I'm weeding out the welcome. If you need to take a second to think about it before you weed, do that. That way you don't have to recut everything. Okay, so once everything is weeded, we're gonna go ahead and mask it. Now I'm gonna be reusing my masking tape because you can reuse your masking tape like quite a few times um, before you actually have to throw it out. So I'm gonna trim this off. I can use this for something later. And I'm just gonna stretch this across my design. Go ahead and cut. And I love this Caesar transfer because the tack is not super strong. Um, and so you don't want anything with a really strong tack, especially if you're working with wood because it tends to pull up the wood grain. Now the sign that I'm using today is like, I wanna say it's more of an MDF particle board situation. Um, but if you're doing like the real wood rounds from Lowe's and Home Depot, you really wanna make sure you're not using permanent vinyl for your stencils. Otherwise, it's gonna pull up your wood grain. Like if you painted your base and applied your stencil and then pull up a permanent vinyl, it's gonna pull your wood grain up and probably mess up your project and you're gonna have to go in and fix it and all that. So it's not a good time. But this uh, stencil vinyl from 143 is bomb. It's my favorite. I've only recently started using it. I actually used to use the Oracle 851, I wanna say, or 651. Um, and it wasn't bad, but I just really, really love this mint stencil vinyl. I'm gonna burnish this down really good. 
and my backer is still drying. So I'm gonna set this stencil to the side and then go over my backer with a heat gun until it's completely dry. You do not wanna apply your stencil um, to your wood sign until your paint is like a thousand percent dry. Otherwise it's gonna peel your paint off. Okay. Okay, so this feels dry, but I don't trust it. <laughs> so I'm gonna cut off a corner of my stencil vinyl that I'm not using. I'm gonna stick it. I'm gonna stick it on here and see. Like there's a couple questionable places and I just don't trust them. I'm gonna burnish it down, what I would normally do. And then I'm gonna peel this off and see what happens. And if it messes up, we can just paint right over it. So I've got my stencil here. I'm gonna flip it over and we're gonna peel off the backing. So just peel this off super carefully. You want all of the stencil portions, the mint color to stick to your transfer. And this can go in the trash. Okay, and then I'm just gonna flip it over and I'm gonna line the bottom edge of the circle up with the bottom edge be super careful once it's down it's usually down but that's why I really love this mint stencil vinyl because it's not super sticky okay I'm gonna burnish everything down I've got a bubble up here so I'm just gonna okay and then we can go ahead peel off your transfer tape I'm gonna save this transfer tape and put it on to our welcome portion. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this on here rather than setting it to the side. Okay. And you all can see up here, I must have had a thicker area of paint that was a little bit um, wet, but that's okay. We already have our stencil down, so we're just gonna keep going. Um, and after we put our welcome on, we'll see if we need to touch up anything right there. Um, but I'm just gonna let it, leave it be for the moment and then I'll touch it up at the end. Okay, so this is the stencil hack that we wanted to show you all. So this is gonna sound weird and you're probably gonna be like, no, that doesn't make any sense. But trust me on this, I've made so many signs and this is the best way to get the cleanest, cleanest lines. So what I'm doing is taking the underneath color, so I'm taking this base color and I'm gonna paint it on top of our stencil before we actually apply the color that we want. So I'm gonna take some of this beige, some of this linen color, and we are gonna take our paintbrush, make sure if you've rinsed your brush that you're completely drying it out, otherwise your paint is gonna be watery and it may mess up your project. So I'm just drying this off with a paper towel really well. And there's already paint dri dripping out of my paintbrush, so make sure you really, really dry that out. And then we're just gonna take this color and we're gonna go right back over top of our stencil. Now you don't do not want this to be super thick. We're working in very thin layers. My, my paintbrush is like, there was water coming out of it, so I grabbed a different brush. I'm going to use this brush just to go over all of these. Just want to make sure you are really, really covering the spots, but just with a thin layer. So we want to make sure and really get in the nooks and crannies of it. Um, this is going to basically seal in our edges of our stencil. So when we go to apply the orange, the orange won't seep underneath our stencil. This kind of seals it all in. I'll also add that a lot of people use Mod Podge for this. While that works, and I've used that for a very long time, I used to use that method a lot. Um, if you don't catch it at the perfect time, like it'll dry too much. And then whenever you peel off your stencil, it'll peel off whatever you painted. Um, and so this method works a lot better for me. 
especially using a flat or a matte paint. Um, I find if I use like a glossy or satin paint, it kind of does a similar thing to the Mod Podge where it peels off my design. Now you may always use Mod Podge and it may always work for you and that's totally fine. I think it's good to just find what works for you and kind of learn it really well and stick with it. And that way you're gonna be a little bit more consistent whenever you're making signs, especially if you're planning on selling them or gifting a lot of them. Um, but it does take some time to figure out what will work for you. I'm gonna also take some of this and apply it at this top edge at the top and bottom edge of where the orange strip will be. That way we have a nice crispy line. Okay, and then you can hit this with the heat gun as well. Just be very, very careful and watch what you're doing because you've got this stencil vinyl on here and it will melt and it will shrivel up. So you wanna stay really far away. Um, it may take a little bit longer, but it's still faster than just waiting for it to dry on its own. Okay, that is pretty dry. So I'm gonna go in with my orange and start filling in my cheetah print. Make sure you're rinsing really well in between colors and then drying it off as good as you can. Okay, so after you've got your second coat on, we can go ahead and pull our stencil up and make sure, I haven't let this dry completely, um, but you can let it dry for just a couple of minutes. My stencil is stuck to my paper. Just be super careful when you're peeling this off so that if you do have any wet paint, it's not gonna like splatter onto your non-wet paint parts and sometimes your stencil will even break. So I like to have like scissors on hand and you can kind of cut it as you go. Even these little sections, you can kind of cut them. But you can see right here, it's already trying to land on my other parts. So just take your time when you're peeling your stencil off because you don't want to mess up what you've already worked on. So now what I'm going to do is go through and make sure I didn't miss any of the middles of these and I'm just going to pull them off. And then before we do anything else, we're going to make sure and completely draw this. But I'm going to show you guys a close up because I want you to see how crisp these lines are. Honestly, like once it dries from far away, it's going to look like it wasn't painted on, but it was, which I love. So let me pull this up. You all can see how crispy these lines really are. And then I accidentally got like a little bit right here, but if you do mess up anywhere, you can go in and touch up with your base coat after everything's completely dry. Now we still have to put the welcome and stuff on there, so I'm still gonna be stressing if it's dry completely or not. What I'll probably do is dry this pretty good with the heat gun and then um, make the bow. And then that way, it'll give it some more time. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry a little bit more and I'm gonna set it to the side and we can work on our bow. Okay, so these are all the stems that I picked out. These are all from Hobby Lobby. Um, you don't have to use Hobby Lobby stems. You can use whatever you've got on hand. 
And I just tried to pick out some like fall colors that kind of go with our burnt orange theme as well as that golden sunset color, which I feel like we pull in with the pumpkins. Um, but I just wanted it to be like super fall vibes. So I'm gonna take off all these tags. And listen, I am not a professional florist. I don't 100% know the correct way to do this, but this is how I have always done it. Um, and so I'm just gonna continue to do it that, that way because I feel like it looks good. So I'm gonna take my back layer, which is these berries, and we can fluff, re-fluff them out after we're completely done. This is gonna be my base. So my berries are my base. And then I'm going to stack these on here. I'm gonna kind of put one up here and one at the bottom, just like this. And I'm just laying these here right now. And then I'm gonna have a pumpkin, I think. Let's put that here maybe. And kind of weave it in with everything. And then I have this beautiful fall sunflower that I just love so much. I'm going to put him right in the middle. And so what I like to do from here is kind of grab everything. And then we're going to take some of this floral wire and connect it together. So I'm going to go ahead and pre-cut some of this wire. I'm going to make it pretty long. That way we know we've got enough. Okay, so I'm just grabbing it all from the back. Just like so. I'm gonna actually take this sunflower out and just do the back portions first. So we can actually grab all of this. And I'm just gonna wrap this wire around here. Just like that, so it's kind of holding it. Then I'm kind of bending it down in the middle so it's sticking up a little bit. It gives me a little bit more control that way. Okay, and now let's add in our sunflower. And you can see it's kind of hard to attach it because it's bent like this. But I'm just gonna slide it right in here. And then attach it this way. Gonna bring it around and we're going to end up stapling this to our sign so if your floral isn't attached super super good whenever we staple it it's going to be on there really well on your sign and then I'm just going to twist this around and trim off any excess okay just bend that down and so we've got our little fall arrangement. Okay, so this is our final shot. I'm gonna sit this to the side and then we will staple it to our sign at the very end. This will be our last step. Okay, so this is completely dry. Um, I'm gonna test it though, just to be safe. I'm gonna cut off a little piece of my stencil and I'm gonna put it right here on the edge and kind of rub it down and then peel it off. That looks pretty good there. Let's come over here and do it. Okay, that's looking pretty good to me. So I'm gonna go ahead. Um, I've got the welcome and then I have the leaf as well. Let me grab my floral piece and just see um, what I like because I was going to do that yellow leaf on here, but I'm feeling like it's going to be too much because this bow or this floral piece is really big. So, oh yeah, I think we'll just skip. We're not going to use this guy. Um, now, if you weren't doing like a big fancy floral, I feel like this would be cute if you had like a more of a simple burlap bow. It would be cute to add something else, but we're just going to do the welcome and then we'll add this to the top. So I'm going to cut the welcome out. Okay. 
Okay, and we can set this stuff to the side. So this is gonna go, I'm gonna kind of line up the bottom of the words to the bottom of this orange box. I'm gonna peel off the backing. And if you see that your stencil is coming up onto your backer, you need to just push it right back down and keep going. Okay, I'm just gonna line this up, paying attention to my sides, and I'm gonna try to line it up right in the middle. And then we're just gonna lay this right on here, just like that. And then take your burnishing tool and smooth it on there really good. You wanna lay your stencil down as smooth as possible. That way no paint's gonna be able to seep underneath it. And then we're gonna peel off our transfer tape. Okay, so the majority of this is in the orange, so I'm going to mask my stencil with the base color, which is the orange in this case, and then we'll go in with the color of our words. So just a nice thin coat. And make sure you're staying inside the stencil and not going out around here. Okay, and then we're gonna let this dry completely and then we will apply the color of our words. Okay, so for my word color, I'm gonna combine a little bit of this beige and this super bright white. These are both StarCraft chalk paints. I'm gonna combine them and make a pretty like light, light beige color. So it's gonna be lighter than the backer color, um, but it's not gonna be so white that it's like super bright, okay. Just gonna put a little on my plate and then rinse my brush and grab some of that bright white. Okay, and then we can just kind of mix those together. I feel like it needs to be a little bit lighter, so I'm gonna add some more white to this. Okay, I think that's gonna be pretty. And what I'm gonna do is dry this orange with the heat gun, and then we'll apply our light beige. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this color we mixed, go ahead and apply that over our stencil. Okay, so I'm gonna let that first coat dry. I can tell that it's gonna need a second coat so I'm gonna let it completely dry and then do a second coat and then we will peel our stencil off. Okay, so we put our second coat on. You can let it dry for a few minutes and then peel your stencil off. And then we're gonna dry it completely before we actually apply our florals. Okay, so once everything is dry, we're gonna wanna put something on the back so that you can actually hang this. Um, I've got some rope here. So you can use just like this kind of rope um, and you can have it showing or you can put it on the very back um, so no one can see it. I'm going to, I think I'm gonna have mine show because it matches everything. Um, but what I like to do is look at my sign upside down this is probably not the most proper way to do this, but this is the way I do it. So I look at my sign upside down like I'm looking at it, and then I'm just going to put my fingers right here, and I'm going to flip it over, and I am going to attach it right here. So I've just got these two little spots, and I'm going to use my staple gun to attach this. Now, if you were just doing like a D-ring in the middle, um, it would be a little bit more precise, but since we're putting this little hanger, you can kind of maneuver your sign once it's actually up on the door to make it straight. So I'm just going to staple this 
on. And then I'm just gonna trim any excess. And then we can flip it over so we've got our hanger part. And then now we're gonna take our staple gun and attach our floral piece. So I'm just gonna attach these stems individually and I'm gonna turn this around so I can really see close up what I'm doing. So I'm gonna start with these back stems and staple them down as well as I possibly can. And it may start making your arrangement look a little weird, but we can adjust everything once it's attached. I'm gonna take my wire cutters and just nip off any that are sticking out a whole bunch, just so I have more room to kinda of put things where I want them. Like I really want this sunflower to be my focal point. And I don't want these necessarily to move around, so I'm gonna staple these down as well. And let me turn it around and look at it and then adjust it how I need it. And you can see there's some stems still sticking out. I'm just going to nip those off. And then fluff all of this. All right. That is the finished product. Okay, y'all, this is the final product. I am in love with this. It turned out way better than I expected. The colors are just giving me fall vibes and I'm here for it. I love it. Um, if you are new here and this is the first project you've ever seen with us, we would love to have you as a part of our membership community. We are a crafting community. We put out tons of new content every month and we'd love for you to be a part of it. We have lots of fun over here um, and we just love creating with you all. So we will see you all in the next one. Thank you for coming. Bye.